Hello, this is Eric again. I'm on part two of three for this audit schedule. I'm, I'm trying to uh, cut these videos to five minutes each so that I'm not throwing too much stuff at any of you guys at, you guys at any one time. And they're a whole lot easier to handle. Um, so this is the same audit schedule as, uh, as last time. If, if you remember, there's there's about a thousand audits in the in the original schedule, and I've only got one up here on this screen. The uh, company that we're producing this for is the Michigan Electric Company, fictitious company, so I can't get uh, in trouble with anybody. And this is audit number two hundred three for MAC auditing the uh, Industrial Analytical Services Company. On, the, on, this, uh, th on this video, I want to show the use of the LOE bars. Now this first one, that LOE bar is for the entire audit, number 203. And as any of you have used LOE bars, this is exactly how one works. This covers the entire duration of this audit, which is 147 days. Now, the client had a special request that he wanted to know exactly how many days different portions of the audit schedule were taking him. Uh, for example, the one I just highlighted, audit prep work. Um, that one starts at the beginning of the audit where you sign the, where you sign the uh, lead auditor, and it goes on down to conducting the pre-job brief. Now, as, as you would assume that the second these bars start expanding or contracting as we update the schedule, this LOE bar would expand and contract accordingly, and this number would change. So we would know at a glance if this thing was um, uh, doing better than expected or worse. Similarly, we have a LOE bar set up for that portion right there. LOE bar of seven days here and six days there, seven days here. Again, these are just for very minute portions of the schedule, some of which had 10 day limits and they were, and they were closely watched. So there you have a uh, LOE bar set up as a counter. I want to go back for a second to the um, uh, to the user defined fields creating uh, bars here in the Gantt chart, the, p the pinkish color and the purple. Now these, these dates were set by user defined fields. These are the, the, prime, the prime time period that, uh, that they wanted the audit to start in the field. And this purple area represents a still acceptable part. And of course these milestones will just move it according to the schedule from the prime period to acceptable to, well, uh, too late. And um, show you the fields themselves. Prime period, yeah, let's flip these around. Okay, that's better. Prime period start, prime period finish, acceptable period start, acceptable period finish. Once these user-defined fields were set up, these dates were, were provided by the quality department and they were inserted into the schedule here. I'll move this back. On the, bar on the bars, coming down, you can see where the, the prime bar, that's the pink, Time scale is user dates, and it started on the prime period start, user defined field. Prime period finish, again, user defined field. And similarly with uh, the acceptable bar. So I just wanted to show you how that one worked. And last, we have, uh, we have some fixed colors here. This is a purple bar another one 
The purple represents fixed bars that the client uh, determined that would, would just never change. Uh, the first one is showing a 60-day warning period between, um, uh, between the first announcement and the audit itself. Then we come down to a 30-day fixed period between the uh, completion of the audit and the milestone there. Fixed 14-day period, and that's pretty much about it. The colors were determined from the, from the bar box here. Uh, you can see right there. Filter was uh, period bars, uh, again, a user-defined field. I clicked with a Y for yes. It would give you a purple bar. Now, uh, something uh, maybe not all of you know, the order of these bars um, make a big difference in the color. If I shift this one up on top of the, uh, of the remaining bar and the critical bar, you will see the critical and the remaining colors go back to, to normal. Bring this back up, bring this down, and the purple's back. You can see that the lower color overwrites the colors that were higher in that, in that bar dialog box. So that about wraps up for two out of three, and uh, thanks for listening.